This stovetop tuna noodle casserole is absolutely delicious. So much flavor, it uses all homemade ingredients that can be from the pantry. And it's what we're about to make. So I'm gonna take you through each step so you feel confident and comfortable making this delicious weeknight meal. Today we're making a stovetop tuna noodle. It's like a casserole, but all done on the stovetop. And what does a good casserole start with? Other than good ingredients, it starts with a really good crumb topping. So this is some fresh breadcrumbs, a few Parmesan grated wonderful cheese bits that I'm gonna add to some melted butter. So this is gonna right away here, toast in that butter, and then we're gonna put together a great stovetop casserole that is seriously super delicious, has so much flavor. So this is a great way to start. So I've been stirring these and you can see now they're getting nice and toasty brown. And we don't need to season them because that Parmesan is gonna act as the seasoning. But you wanna take them off once they're getting like this. And this is when they're done. So all you have to do at this point is pick it up and just put them right back into whatever bowl you want so they can cool off. So this is our end result. This is what we're gonna use as a topping at the end of making this casserole. And that's kind of the beauty of it. And you wanna make sure that you get them out when they start getting that toasty smell and getting the color because they'll burn really quickly at that point. So I'm trying to make sure I get all of these bits out. And then I'm even going to set it right down here because it's hot. I'm gonna take just a paper towel, make sure I can clean it out somewhat. But see, you wanna make sure you get all of them because that will continue to either burn or when we're actually building now the casserole, that would not be good to have in there. So I can finish and just get those last few out then with a paper towel. The butter makes it so they don't stick. It's super easy to do this. So you can see now they're all done. So that's our end. And we're trying to use one pot for this whole thing just because why have a mess come? Why make a mess with something else? You don't want to do that. So I'm going to set this back on the stove. It's still warm. I'm going to put a little bit of butter in it and let it start melting. And what we have are the beginnings to the base of all the flavor, which is going to be onion and celery. So I have my onion mostly chopped and I'm just finishing up with my celery. So these two together have kind of that great flavor that's gonna go really well with the tuna. Add just a hint of texture. Now, usually I'm not someone that loves celery, but when you use it, it has to be done correctly. I think tuna noodle casserole is a place where it really is needed. You need that base flavor and that vegetal note that the celery is gonna add. So I'm chopping it up in somewhat decent sized pieces, but I'm not dicing it up. You're gonna notice I'm leaving it from a size that will still maintain some structure and not just get mushy. So I'm gonna grab all my onion. We're gonna pop it right in this melting butter. So the reason in this case I'm using butter, a lot of times we use oil when we're making things, but butter has flavor. So while we're sometimes scared of the fat of butter, the fat content can be the same actually as a lot of oils. It doesn't have as many of the healthy properties, but you could use ghee if you want to, which is clarified butter. I just love the flavor of butter this is gonna add. And I really think when you're going ahead and making a casserole like this, we're not gonna use processed cans of soup to put into it. So we wanna make sure we add rich homemade flavors to it. And so that's what this butter is gonna do with this onion and celery. So with that down in there, I always, you know, like to season every layer as I go. I'm gonna make sure to add some salt. That's gonna actually draw out some of those liquids, those water that's in the onion and the celery, but it's also gonna make sure it seasons it and a little bit of pepper. It's just freshly ground. I'm gonna put that right in there and we're just gonna let this saute until it's just beginning to soften. So I have some garlic minced up and if you look over here, you can see my onion has started to get translucent and just beginning to get color on it, which is beautiful. That celery is nice and bright and beginning to soften. So I'm gonna add some garlic in. Garlic we add a little bit after just so it doesn't get bitter or burn from too much cooking. So I'm just gonna let that be fragrant for a few seconds. And that's because all you really need to do at this stage, since there's gonna be a long cooking time yet after this, it's just let that garlic get fragrant. And instantly, you can tell it's getting warm. That's all you need and it smells really good. So what we're gonna do now is add some Italian seasoning. So what the Italian seasoning is, is a blend of seasonings. We have oregano, we have thyme, a little bit of rosemary. And what this does is just give us a nice, it's a nice weeknight way to me to add flavor without having the fresh herbs always on hand. And just add a great kind of just underlying tone to this whole dish that will really cut through everything we're gonna add. And seriously, it smells so good. So to this now, we're gonna cook the noodles right in this. So we're gonna add some chicken stock. You could use a vegetable stock. And then with that, we're gonna add some milk and it's whole milk because we wanna make sure to have flavor in here. We're gonna 
Then add, and we're, this is pretty much at a simmer already. You can see it's already bubbling around the edges and that's all you want. Cause what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cook the noodles and we're using shells because I think they pick up everything we're gonna be making so well. And we're gonna put them right in this, give them a stir and then cook it just like a noodle. So we're gonna let this sit here, cook for a few minutes. I'm gonna cover it, let it simmer away and really soak all that in and we'll move on. I removed the lid after it's been cooking. You can see it; most of that liquid now is being absorbed. See that? And actually the starch from the pasta is what's thickening it slightly, which is what I love. So now we can add a few other ingredients and this is just amplifying that richness. So a little bit of cream, not a lot, but this again, we're not gonna put in any processed soups or anything into this. So we wanna add that richness in a really nice way. A Little bit of Neufchatel cheese. Now this is not quite a cream cheese. It has less fat, but it has that same creaminess that will melt into this whole mixture, which is what I want and add this really great underlying. That cheese is something I keep in, on hand all the time. It's just a great way to add a beautiful richness. So here I have some cheddar. I'm using a white cheddar and I like to shred my own only because the pre-shredded ones, they often have a coating on them. I don't like the stabilizers they have in them. They just kind of have a weird flavor. And to me, to get the best flavor for cheese, you have to actually shred it. So I'm gonna leave a little bit for the top, but then I'm going to take this and just sprinkle it right in here. We're gonna let all this melt together. It's gonna to start to thicken, then we'll finish it off with our peas and tuna. So that Neufchatel is now pretty much melted. That cream has really started to get a nice thickness to it too. And so I'm quickly zesting a lemon because anytime you have the richness of cream, any types of milks, you want something that can like cut through that citrus. It has a brightness to it. You can see I just hold my grater upside down. So then I can come over here and just flick it in and just put it all in. And you can see if you look at this, the creamy factor of this already, look at that. It's like the perfect stovetop casserole. So now I wanna add our my peas, which are frozen, but once they hit that, they're gonna thaw really quickly, and some tuna. Use whatever tuna you love. I mean, it's tuna casserole. It's whatever you have on hand. That's the great thing, pantry staples. So we're gonna add in the peas. And again, once they're stirring into this, they're going to thaw really quickly. The tuna is already cooked because it's canned. So we just wanna heat everything through and it'll be perfect. So I just brought this over. I had sprinkled on the remaining just little bit of cheese just to kind of have some melted cheese on top. And then we have our toasted breadcrumbs. See, we did these in the beginning so we could just sprinkle them on top however many you want. You could put it on per serving if you want to, but they're toasty. They have that nice crackliness to them. And then a little bit of fresh parsley if you want. The thing is with parsley, it's like lemon. It has that freshness at the end that adds kind of just that punch of, it does have flavor. It does have flavor even though we don't think it does. And it brightens everything up just a bit. So then you just serve it out here. This to me is like growing up. You have a pot on the stove that goes to the table that you just serve from. This is how those weeknight meals, you know? We didn't always put everything in bowls on a weeknight. Actually, we did put a lot of things in bowls, but if it was a casserole like this, we didn't. We just ate it directly from here. And when you go in and scoop some out, look how good, look at that. It is creamy, it is smooth. It is every bit as good as what you're expecting from either your childhood or one of your favorites, but better, because it's just completely homemade in the stovetop, and it can be made in an evening. Mm. You know what I love? The peas are not overcooked. We add them at the end, so they're not mushy. They have a great bite to them. That little bit of lemon, just a little bit, comes through the richness and really brings some flavor forward, not just of lemon, but of all the other flavors too. A little crunch of some breadcrumbs, those are beyond delicious. It's really a great meal. It's a great stovetop dish. It's a great casserole. It's one of those things that a family can love. It's a great way because it has protein. It has heftiness with the pasta. It has peas for vegetables. It's just really good. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you enjoy some tuna casserole because guess what? It can be enjoyed and it can be homemade. Share this video around so others can see how easy this is. And check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on there. Happy eating.